Hey, it's Joe, and this is the build for the Simonon. If you haven't yet watched the tour that I created for the Simonon, I would encourage you to watch that first, and then return and watch this full build video for the project. It's very loosely based on the Parthenon, and I had to make some alterations to make it more simmable. The statue in the front is just a game statue that's been scaled up several times to give you that sense of awe and wonder. The little hills on either side of the Simonon are just two roofs, and they've been clad with the textures from the Hobbit House. So really you just start with a rectangle. The only way to do a Parthenon-like building is to start with any kind of shape, start placing down columns, uh, and I did try to keep to the proper grid from the Parthenon, but it's simply not possible as you see later on I begin to grow the house a little bit. But at first the best thing is just stop putting down lots and lots of columns, because that's really what the Parthenon is about. It's a pity that we don't have any, you know, direct columns, so our neck will have to do. With this build, I only put columns along two or three sides initially, because it's rather difficult to see through them to create the interior. So this way, it saved me having to keep removing them, uh, or dodging them, to create my design. It actually becomes quite tricky doing the upper level because it simply won't stretch over or under and it, when, you, when you pull the roofs and you pull the slab that is technically the second floor, it pulls the lower parts as well. So here's me trying to adjust things and trying to get the same tiles that are on the base of the Simonon to match the tiles on the stairs. This is the plain old roofs with the green textures stuck on it, and then it's just slapped onto the side of the house. To create that, there's the tiles on the front and the back, you have to create a separate rectangular room, place it down over the stairs, and then you can actually texturize them with proper floor tiles. The Parthenon really just has two rows of columns on either side and a single row on the long ends. I tried to keep the exterior plan almost identical to the Parthenon, I quickly realized that I just didn't have enough room inside and it just didn't look all that good so I began changing as I go along and just the house just keeps growing. I thought, you know, what is a modern build without huge glass windows? They sit behind the columns so it's relatively private. Never a good thing to put windows be <laughs> in the halfway through walls so that uh, takes some adjustment later. But the house just kept growing because I realized after placing down furniture that it just simply didn't work. At this point of the build it's still in exact columns uh, scale to the Parthenon, but that very quickly changed. I thought I'd place those tiny little windows there purely because it's going to be a dark corner. Here we go, I'm pulling the Parthenon sideways and adding a couple of extra columns. Of course everything has to be adjusted, the downstairs, the upstairs, the roof and so forth. As you can see, the bed just simply doesn't fit. And then, after I fixed the bed, I realized, well, there's not much room to put a bathroom in there either. So the bathroom had to grow a little bit. It actually turned out to be a much better house than just simply, simply sticking with the Parthenon dimensions. I kept the interior quite simple because it just simply isn't space, and it would just become crowded. A couple more adjustments to the rooms. And I just cannot get it right. I realize I can't even get a wardrobe in here. So, more pulling and pushing of walls, which is fantastic in The Sims. Wish we could do that in real life. I tried positioning the bed in a whole lot of different ways, but it just simply doesn't work. There's just no way to make it a livable house. So it defeats the whole Sim point of making a house that you can't even use. Ideally, as I mentioned in the tour, this should be a commercial lot. So I've created the built-in wardrobe on that side, but it again moves because it just simply doesn't work. I thought, well, if you're going to live in a glass house, you're going to need a few blinds. I normally don't put curtains or blinds on my projects, but in this case I thought, well, the windows are pretty high and they get higher afterwards. I actually increased the height of the walls to give the Parthenon more, uh, more scale. As I broadened the plan, it became a bit too squat, so I actually increased the wall size and later point I actually changed all the windows. So the blinds actually go quite high up and don't ob obscure the view of the interior. The bathroom as well is also quite a challenge because 
of such a small, simple shape. Uh, what are you doing that? And there we go. Bathroom's not big enough, so we'll just simply stretch the walls. A few more columns, a few more. <laughs> Repositioning of thousand-year-old columns, and there we go. At this point, I also redesigned the front, because as you start changing the width, the symmetry starts to fall apart, and everything's lopsided. And I wanted the exterior to conform with an absolute symmetry. So everything on the outside is a perfect symmetry. Inside, of course, is a little bit different. But even then, I tried to keep some balance in the design, purely for aesthetics. I actually kept most of the house uh, fairly monochromatic on the inside. It's just simply too small to go crazy and have sort of lots of different colors in uh, really what amounts to three different spaces, the bathroom, the open plan living area, and the bedroom. What's a bathroom without a corner tub? A sim that can afford to live in this house is definitely going to want to luxuriate in there. So everything's pretty much just a sort of a darkish blue contrast to, to the exterior. The exterior I kept pretty pale and, and white and almost almost nondescript. I didn't I wanted the I wanted to recover that look of a very old temple. Originally uh, temples like the Parthenon would have been quite brightly coloured. They would have painted the frieze uh, and the columns and, and even all the statues and that would have been quite highly coloured. However, you know, we know as classical Greek architecture is just well bleached by the sun and the eons. So it's just so sort of very pale white stone. A little bit of recolouring, getting everything to match the same blues, which is sometimes a challenge in The Sims to get the same kind of colours in furniture. The bathroom needed a bit of life, so I added a little plant in there by the window. And uh, then comes time to place some lighting. Sometimes I actually forget to place lighting in the buildings until I realise it's actually just a little bit dark. Those areas that were originally quite small and pokey led themselves to making built-in bookcases almost. And there we go, I'm basically rearranging the windows again as the walls keep moving, so do the windows. And uh, with the kitchen, it was quite a challenge. I actually cut a lot of it out of the video because it was just repetitive moving counters around trying to get as much into place into such a small space. But it can be done. I used to design some very small architectural places, as is the current trend. And the true art of design comes from getting as much use out of a small space as possible. Anybody can design large spaces. You know, wasting space is easy. It's making use of what you've got that can be quite a challenge. This kitchen went through some many, many renovations. I just couldn't get the look right. And there you go, the cupboards again. <laughs> I did eventually get a fairly nice island that wraps around and then, of course, the fridge had to move because that just didn't work anymore. I like under cupboard lighting. It just had such a modern touch to specifically kitchens. I'm not fond of ceiling lights in the Sims purely because they get in the way when you're viewing either in gameplay or just viewing the plans. So wall lights are usually my go-to. Also in a ceiling this high, uh, in real life, the lighting would be quite distant and quite far. By the time it actually strikes the floor or the furniture, it's actually quite, quite dim. This is the central column that I created to house the fridge because I simply needed space to place a sink. I'd forgotten to place a sink. We don't want the Sims to be washing the dishes in the bathroom. Although they do have a dishwasher, but they will insist on going to do the strangest things in the bathrooms. A little bit of clutter just to make it more simmable, more lived in. I wasn't sure what floor to use. Originally I was going to keep the sort of old cracked marble tiles throughout the house, but I thought it's just inside it's supposed to be comfortable. Uh, the outside can be cold and sort of marble, but the inside needs to be a bit more comfortable, so I decided to go with the wooden floor. And uh, every house needs a computer if you don't have a TV, and I don't particularly like TVs because they tend to make very stupid sims. They're computers at least, they can learn skills, etc. And 
research things and it always adds a nice touch of modernism and then I realized well you know, what kind of coffee tables could one use here so the default is always the uh, suitcases you really should stop using them and then I recolor all the counters again to match the theme the general blue theme that flows throughout the whole house I tried different colors but eventually I just went to the exactly the same color and the same wallpaper it actually works quite nicely on very tall walls because of it's got quite a high quite a quite a large cornice and skirting board brighter blue I thought but this didn't work so darker blue was what I finally settled down for and somewhere along the line here I changed all the windows again because I just realized that they just did they went to scale and if you're going to have something that's sort of out of scale then you need to make it really out of scale really monumental so it looks dramatic and at this point the walls go up and then I thought well if I'm going to continue the symmetry then perhaps I need to move the property so by the magic gravity defying laws of the sims I'm going to simply pick up the whole property and move it in one foul swoop I was trying to create a sort of front and the rear matching swooping area but because you can only have one foundation heights here we go without pulling all the windows out and putting in all the taller ones because you can only have one height of foundation you can't actually create a lower sort of flower beds etc out of the foundations so the sweeping fronts really had to evolve now moving all the blinds up if it's going to be over scale make full height windows and then add blinds but sims that would live in this house wouldn't have any privacy issues they'd be quite exhibitionist i imagine besides the columns do obscure much most of the view there we go let's position the property again i decided to actually go completely symmetrical and position the house almost exactly in the middle we're using the sort of basement, well not basement, but the foundation tool uh, created some sort of rounded oblong shapes that I could use as as an entrance sort of planter of some sort. And combining the two and merging them creates quite a nice sweeping sort of almost arms opening out to invite the visitor in. And then of course it's a matter of copying and pasting but because you can't mirror the objects you've actually got to create two position them and then i managed to just simply copy them to the back of the temple and there you go now i tried to match the terrain paint to the part of the property that you cannot edit you can see a bit of a line in the game and if you use this property on another uh, domestic lot you may actually want to change this terrain paint or tile it or do something on the back I actually use tiles which uh, tend to merge better into the rest of the world I wish there was a way to place these board uh, these green borders down without having to manually twitch and twiddle and turn them until you get a perfect arc this is something that I really wish you could do automatically and of course having done this I had to do this for all all of the corners that take these herbaceous borders of course I cut a lot of that out of the video there was the point in the repetition you don't really want to use walls in these sort of builds that just simply block out the view these herbaceous borders work well and they blend into the surroundings of this Windenburg world I do love that maze. I wish it, it was easier to create one uh, in on the actual property, but placing these hedges are is quite a mission. I decided, well, you know, if it's going to be a classical garden, it will need some sort of border all the way around. It also helps to blend in the lawn textures that are created from the horrible sort of green, nondescript of the rest of the the world but those green uh, hedges just didn't look particularly good so I went back to the original design of the squares and then I added two little gates 
it's not exactly a security feature, but it just gives you a, sort of that garden, those public gardens with the very sort of formal entrances and places that you could sort of hang around in the garden for a bit. And there's the green texture that's uh, on the two foundations uh, that go in the back and the front that give you that sweeping front look. At first I placed down all these sort of scraggly hedges and I thought well maybe they could go up and in scale and smaller in scale. Then I realized it just didn't really work and it doesn't really have the look that I was going for. So I eventually just pulled them all out and called the gardeners back to do proper box hedges. And there's the gate. And I thought, well, if you're going to completely close it off, the sims will have to come in at some point. And it's, there's nothing worse than having to wait for a sim to walk for half an hour to enter a, a particular spot that's literally just a couple of tiles away. So having more entrances and more gates actually is a good thing for gameplay. And then comes time to plant some something in those planters. I found that Everything I put in there just didn't look right, so I sort of tried to keep it as sort of classic as possible. On one end, I changed the borders to have these planters. This is actually the public side, the entrance. And I thought they worked quite well having those sort of square planters. These two little fountains were quite tricky to get down and to try and hide the, that the fact that the, the backs are, the backs of them are actually just square. I wish there was a way to create curved swimming pool uh, edges and also the fountains even uh, you know creating curved walls would be quite great they obviously got them to work in these these sort of pre-built foundations that you can put down so it's a pity that we cannot actually place them on corners of, of houses i do love water features so they're just a lovely fantasy item to place in the sims game when you don't actually have to clean it yourself these things are just a dreadful mess but one also imagine that you would have groundskeepers that would keep everything in ship shape. I like the f uh, fish fountains. I don't like the fish quite as much as I like the actual fountains. I just like the idea of uh, yeah, water pouring from higher down into these fountains. I wish there was something a little bit more <laughs> less cartoony than these fish. Terrain paint always makes or breaks a property, I think. And I'm not entirely sure still about those pebbles, but I thought it added sort of a breakaway from the hard edges of tiles to sort of a more casual sort of pebbles and greenery and then adding in some trails where people would naturally be walking and wearing down the lawns. The gardens are very just symmetrically laid out and really just copied from one side to the other side. And here we are having a bit of greenery, so it's not just plants on one side and then big expanses of tiles with nothing else. I thought these, these create these nice little low-lying areas of green in opposite ends of the similar. I then changed the gate and I thought, well, this, this sort of arch is in keeping with the general style, and it, it adds a nice passage almost. You come in and the, the focus is led to those statues in those alcoves. And there's the Simenon, scaled up a lot. And I thought, well, she can't just stand on the terrain paint. So I picked up that square box and raised her to sit on top of there. There we go, a bit of maiden's hair fern is always, always handy to make things look like a ground cover. I actually would rather like these low-lying flower beds. I wish they, were, they came in more colours and more realistic variations. I thought this adds a nice little very green touch. I then changed the benches out of these alcoves and actually placed statues. And then I replaced the statues with something a little bit different. Uh, not to have the same statue repeated on all sides. So each, each statue is now different. And some people proved a bit of a challenge because it disappears under the roof, which is of course not supposed to be on the floor. So it takes a bit of pushing and pulling and twiddling and fiddling to get the the heel side not to intrude over the swimming pool, because it just creates a strange cave-like 
effect with the green grass over the actual water. Again, very symmetrical, and it was literally as much as possible, it was literally just copied over to the opposite side, which is not shown on the video because it's purely identical. Formal gardens are actually rather more difficult to create than informal gardens because you can just merely go along and place down plants and soften up edges and give it almost like a wild look with you know, gr you know wild grasses and tufts and all sorts of things. But when you create them informal, uh, you tend to be more confined and restricted to you know how could you have weeds in a garden like this doing a bit of work on the swimming pool before copying it over to the other side. And then I thought, well, it needs a bit of a raised edge there, which will help to hide the edge of the roof coming down from the side of the simonon. I like uh, swimming pool lights. They just add such a nice in, you know, touch to the evenings. And then to hide the roofs a little bit more, I added two additional roofs to create sort of a a uh, slightly irregular shape on, on some of the corners of the simonon. I hit it with uh, some flowers. And this is the formal uh, side opposite to the swimming pools, creating a sort of very geometric path that you go from one gate to the other. I then found, of course, that the gate wasn't absolutely perfectly aligned, which is rather annoying. But there's nothing that a few corners can't solve. The terrain painter. Some of the terrains that come with the game are really quite bizarre. I don't know, I just don't find them to be very realistic. That one with the big white flowers just seemed to be, it's almost like somebody took really horrible wallpaper and just spread it out on the floor. And what does a park need? But some benches to reflect, sit and reflect on the tranquil surroundings with the trickling water. A lot of what I'm building here is really used because of the move cheats object which enables you to actually combine some objects that ordinarily aren't actually combinable without enabling the move cheats option. But honestly it just adds a whole new level of realism to combine various objects. And it doesn't, it, many of these combinations do not impact on gameplay at all because the sims don't actually do anything with them. And now we're going below. This is the maze that I created and I had to actually change it you'll actually find in the final game the basement was actually cutting through the one roof hill above so I actually had to bring the basement back in a bit to prevent it from interfering with the roof above if you have a basically the game just assumes that it's it's a you know it's a normal room with a roof over it and when you have the roof over the basement, it simply cuts it away because it, it, it assumes there's a floor above the basement and it therefore cuts back the, the roof accordingly. But it looks terrible with the hill because there's a, a gap and you can see this sort of just a floating flat hillside. I added a bit of lighting because others have just turned out to be too dark. But it'd be kind of fun to have this sort of very dark, spooky maze. I really like the entrance, although it turned out to be a little bit smaller than I anticipated. But I, li I like the fact that it's almost hidden. You know, you'd have to sort of know that it's there before you could actually enter this basement. The basement itself is not quite in keeping with the style of the Parthenon. But it was a whim, and I thought, well, there's not a lot of playable space upstairs. So then, of course, I did actually get, just get carried away. I created a whole living area downstairs, and then just completely remodeled the basement as I went along to fit what it, what I wanted to do. And it's really just into, mostly an entertainment area. And uh, you can actually learn some skills down here. And entertain. And of course, go through the hidden bookcase door and get totally lost in the maze for all of five seconds. It's quite interesting that the, the Sims always seem to know where they are. They never seem to get lost. I think it would be an interesting feature to have some that just sort of got lost, you know, where am I in the game? So I thought, well, uh, you're going to need an additional bathroom. I thought, why not do uh, an additional bedroom downstairs as well? It's all sort of, sort of castle-like feel. 
which is about the closest thing really that you can do with a, a, a path non themed building. I thought I would just make the toilet separate. Of course it never works because then you, know, you use double doors and the double doors don't fit onto single walls so a lot of wall moving had to happen which of course then made the bedroom too small and of course the bed doesn't fit so the bedroom has to grow. What fun! And of course the head table, the bedside tables don't fit so the room has to grow some more. <laughs> I don't know if anybody would really use the, this bedroom downstairs but I thought well if you do want to play this as a house, at least you've got a second bedroom. You could use it as a guest bedroom of sorts. If it's if you use this as a commercial lot, I'd imagine you could probably have Sims, you know, take a rest in these areas. But to use it as a commercial uh, lot, I would strip out the upstairs area interior and redo it as a proper commercial lot. But there's not an awful lot to do in the house. Well, in the original uh, house, all the areas are, are roped off and it's really just like a museum. And here we go with the, the final part of the build, adding a bit of lighting. I'm not too sure about those strip lights on the roof. And they also didn't add much lighting to the frieze. I was hoping to uh, get a bit of lighting up there on the frieze, but it, it didn't really add very much. Most of these sim houses really come alive at night when you strategically place lighting in places that uh, just make it really dramatic. I'm not heavily fond of these floor lights, but I thought, well, in this case, what else am I going to do? So I just sort of put a few down just to add little pools of light. I found the one on the base of the statue, just above that plinth, actually added an interesting lighting to the statue of Simonon. These wall alcove lights were quite difficult to position because there's no wall there. So to get them to actually align took me hours. Of course, you don't get to see any of that. I just showed you the successful parts. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. This is the, some of the screenshots for the final house. You will find that some of the areas have changed a little bit, but not an awful lot. Particularly the downstairs changed uh, a bit. The upstairs is pretty much as you saw it in the build. Very monochromatic, all blues and uh, beige. The, out the outside is entirely just white marble. It's such a scenic area, this. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Give it a thumbs up and turn on notifications and I'll let you know when I have new content. Thanks so much for watching.